Oh yeah, work it then. Huh? <laughs> so this is my well. Uh, so the well driller just left and he uh, he left me with a... Wait, wait, you want me just zoomed in on your face, right? Yeah, if you can get like just my, my right nostril. Oh. Okay, so uh, the, the well driller just left. Uh, he drilled this well for me. Uh, this is the top of the casing sticking out, six inch pipe. It goes down. Uh, the well is actually 325 feet deep. We hit water at 300 feet. Uh, I went an extra 25 just to, uh, I'm not even sure what the exact reason is, but we went a little bit further uh, beyond that. This casing here is to keep out all the overburden from falling into the hole. And the overburden is just what you're seeing here. It's the dirt and the mud and the rocks and the clay and the silt and everything. Uh, if you didn't have that, the hole would really just collapse in. So it's 160 feet of this casing down to bedrock. And the casing is slammed into the bedrock hole, maybe about uh, eight or 10 feet. And it makes a good seal so all that overburden doesn't fall into it. Now we're locked in casing and we went down another, uh, what, 200 and something feet down to 325 feet total depth. You can see here we're running it. Um, have a three quarter horse uh, pump in there um, that's just on right now pumping water out and you can see the water is kind of brown if you come in close let's see you can see that that is definitely not clear that is colloidal clay and there's also a little bit of sulfur gas in there so this area is notorious for those two things um, it's kind of a 50 50 chance to get clear water or to get one or both of those. It's kind of annoying because it has to be filtered out. Uh, sulfur gas is there to stay, it can't be filtered out. Uh, you can't get rid of it. It effervesces um, and within an hour probably, a, certain, a short period of time, it'll actually effervesce and escape from the water and then there's no sulfur at all. Uh, but if you use it right out of, the, out of the well like this, it does have a faint smell of sulfur. Yesterday when, we fin when you finished drilling, when you hit the water, it was just, it was actually way more brown than it is right now. Uh, it was really dirty. Uh, you know, I chose to go with a, with a rotary well drilling machine. It pushes compressed air out as it's drilling down through the bedrock. It pushes compressed air down and then blows all of the, the bits and everything out the top, the sides of, around the sides of the bit and then out the top of the casing here. That's what is all around us. Um, in fact, this right here, this is bedrock from uh, 300 feet down in the earth. This is shale. Um, pretty cool. And the rest of what you see here is just clay muck. Because apparently the first 15 feet is like, you know, this kind of like good drainage, silty, a little bit of clay um, and sandy dirt here mixed with these rocks. Uh, but below that is actually just uh, about 150 feet of just mucky clay and that's you know, like I said, that's what you see right here. That's what this is, this clay stuff. So, so the water is coming out brown yesterday, thick brown, I was really worried about it. Uh, so what we did was we let it sit overnight and the water uh, was slowly rising throughout the night because when it started at 325 feet, there was there's pressure in the veins in the bedrock that pushed that water up. When we came back this morning, it was up at 54 feet in this pipe. So that water got pushed up, up to uh, elevation of 54 feet below the surface. So we dropped the pump down 160 feet, or 180 feet rather, and that's where we're pumping out of now, from 180 foot depth. So there's like another, uh, like, you know, 160 feet of water in the column below where the pump is. What's been happening as we're pumping it all out because we're trying to clean up the water. We're seeing if the water coming in is maybe cleaner coming in the veins. When they when they drill down, it's a very violent process. It's drilling and the compressed air is blowing up and they're shooting water down there. So you know that breaks everything up and it and it you know and then and then you know it's possible that all that clay is maybe you know just got disrupted from the veins when we did all that. So by pumping all this water out, letting it run. Um, we are seeing if uh, the new water coming in after we cycle all the water from the disruptive well drilling process, if the new water is clean or not. Um, and it is, it is lightening up. It, 
This is significantly lighter than it was yesterday, so I'm hopeful that uh, we'll have clean water that we can actually drink uh, after this is cycled through, but we'll see about that. Um, what you're looking at here is just a cap, temporary cap uh, that I'm going to do for this winter so we can just fill water in our, in our camper until we hopefully build next year. This is a pressure gauge and this is showing the pressure of, of the water coming up from the pump. Now, if I open this all the way, see now we got a lot more flow coming out of the, uh, out of the, the hose here, but we go down to a pressure of zero because we're not creating any back pressure. The valve is wide open. The pump's able to flow freely right out. But as we close this valve, you can start to see a little back pressure going up and the more we close it, the more pressure there will be. Now I want to be at 50 PSI because what we did with that, we figured out via a, uh, via a sonar device uh, that, that uh, my well driller had, he was able to see the little port on the top of this cap and he's able to put that down and sends out sonar waves or whatever and it sees what the level of the water is. And he could see as we like open and close it, the water level would drop more or would rise more because the well is being constantly fed um, until it reaches 60, 54 feet and then it kind of stops. I guess the pressure of the water um, sitting on top of where the vein is, way down below, kind of pushes down and it keeps more water from coming out at about 54 feet. Uh, look at the screen. That tells you how far down the water is. Temperatures. 72.4 feet, and it's going down. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's got like some type of sonar or something? It or? is sonar, yeah. Oh, Sonic, okay. sonar, whatever you want. Okay, cool. We're trying to keep the pump pumping out at a rate that does not, that keeps the level of the water at a steady point. Basically, we're trying to match how quickly the water is coming in from the veins of the bedrock, uh, just to let this thing run for a while and without having to worry about it running low or pumping all the water out. Uh, so, getting it at 50 PSI, it's keeping the water level at around 70 something feet, about 20 feet below where it, where it would be naturally, and, uh, and it's allowing more water to come in and just maintain that level at 70 something feet. So that's why we're doing that. What do we got here else? We got a little port for the electric coming in. Also what's, uh, what's cool about this is we have a, um, a drain back, so about 5 feet down, just below frost level here, we got a little 8 inch hole drilled in the side of the PVC pipe that goes all the way down to the pump. And what that allows us to do is, you know, in the winter time when water is gonna freeze, when we wanna pump a whole bunch of water out, what we do is when we're done, we set it back to about the position, we turn off the pump first, obviously, so it stops pumping. And then we leave this valve at like a 45 degree angle here, about half open. And that'll allow the water that's in here to drain out. And all the water that's above that five foot down, that little hole, drilled in the side, a little drain hole, it'll allow all this to just drain out slowly. So that the water um, is gonna, the water level will be filling up that pipe that comes up to here all the way up to five feet down where that little drain is, below frost level, allowing me to not have a frozen pipe in the winter time. And that's about it. So we're gonna see in the next few days if this clears up, hope it does. If it doesn't, uh, there'll be more videos about how we have to deal with that.